Aloha and welcome back to another Space Weather Update. My name is Alexis. This is the Ascension Diaries and we are going to be talking about the X5 solar flare that has affected my consciousness as well as everyone else's, including Japan that had a massive earthquake. So let's get into this update. <laughs> we are going to first just show you the release that came out from the sun during that X5 solar flare. It was substantial. It is more towards Saturn and Neptune. Uh, I believe those planets were the ones pulling the hardest on this particular flare. And it's going to glance past Earth here in the yellow and the yellow over here. These two yellow dots, all three of these yellow dots represent Earth. And this is the sun. And yes, the planets, the Saturn and Neptune, you can't see on this chart, but they are over here. You can see more clearly the Sun and Saturn and Neptune are in the direction that the flare is going. But the impact of the flare was pretty quick. And the earthquake situation in Japan is ongoing to this moment as I'm recording this. And there is quite a bit of data about that. So... Overall, the worldwide, all of the worldwide monitors are showing quite a fuzzy and prolonged earthquake situation. The crust is still moving quite a bit in the area. We can move over here to just show you all of the earthquakes that are piling up on this particular point of interest on the earth. And the opposite point of that spot is the area where the solar flare did impact. So if you go like this, whoop, oh, it's not gonna let me. It's on opposite sides of this particular location. So it's sort of like the flare hits the location, it ripples through the whole planet and conjoins here at this point on the opposite side before it leaves and passes past our planet and continues out through the heliosphere. So this solar flare wasn't just for us, it's going to be visiting quite a few <laughs> planets and planetary bodies and whatever else, which is a part of the study I find very interesting. So here's another visual of the location of the biggest earthquake and they were not very deep, they were only at a depth of 10 kilometers on average is what I was seeing. And there was quite a few videos of people. They were up and about enough. There was some daylight so we could see more of the movement and the water and obviously the shaking buildings and infrastructure. But thankfully, Japan is built in a way to kind of withstand this stuff because they've endured many earthquakes like this. And they're famous for them. And I believe this is actually a time of year where these may happen more often. And I assume it is because... That's the part of the Earth that's facing the sun the most right now is opposite of Japan, like we said, the Southern Hemisphere in South America, which is, again, where that solar flare impacted. So there was also some drama, unfortunately, in Los Angeles that was happening during and around this time. We have another still image here of when the impact of that solar flare is kind of going to sweep past Earth. It's going to be July 2nd, but we are getting aurora alerts right now uh, confirming that this, this particular impact may already be happening. So I'm just going to show you those really quick. So the aurora is picking up and the sunspots are still active. We are also seeing a picking up in the Russian charts, the electromagnetic frequency. The atmosphere there is beginning to be amplified naturally and unnaturally. Italy seems to be not as intense compared to what Russia's putting out. The global consciousness dot today is going mostly in the green. So we've been responding pretty good to the energy so far from this particular solar flare. But during this time, many fireworks were also going off around the world, and I just wanted to make mention to that. Just as a way of maybe the mechanics, and there may be more to it, and we may want to be more gentle when it comes to setting off fireworks. I'm not sure. I think maybe that, I think maybe there's a conversation to be had about the effect of fireworks, and we're just here to basically begin watching the solar wind shift in speed. We can go to spaceweather.com to quickly check. It's still pretty slow, but it's creeping up there in speed, so it won't be long before perhaps more of it comes through. 
the solar wind data is still missing from those solar flare times and there was two major solar flares basically since i've kind of talked to you last we we discussed the x5 which happened and then promptly after there was a, a an m1 or there was a few m class flares clearly they're not as powerful but they were important and I want to make mention to those that there wasn't just one solar flare we've had a few and you know Japan is also still shaking it wasn't just one it wasn't just one earthquake it's still going and just to be sure that you are doing your research I wanted to mention that this flare happened it began around 1800 hours UTC and it peaked around 2155 UTC that January or sorry December 31st right before the new year in case you want to check in with a little bit more of the specifics so the solar flare is now top I want to say it's either top 33 or 34 it's top 34 now in like all time solar flares it's the 34th most powerful that we've gotten and it's the most powerful flare since 2017 which still is reigning supreme as again some of the more powerful flares that have ever happened it's top tier top 11 and top 7 flares ever happened in 2017 September the 6th and the 10th so hard to compete with that but we might be able to compete with it in 2024 and that's why we're all kind of here remember 2017 and the expansion of consciousness you may have experienced then we could see another renaissance like consciousness shift and you'll be able to wa watch people break through and live for their own bliss and become entrepreneurs that we could only ever dream of and so on i think there's a lot of that potential this year it's it's germinating it's ready to sprout <clears throat> looking at looking at all the storms and the water coming in to kind of water these ideas it's not too many storms yet but we're going to keep watching at least they're not getting an incredible amount of rain with the earthquakes and they're worried about tsunamis but i haven't heard anything about tsunamis quite yet so i think we may not have to worry about tsunamis which is fantastic if you guys need any of these space weather links you can go to my link tree slash ascension diaries and i have a lot of these links in here i'd also encourage you to please go follow my instagram and my partner's instagram consciouscrypto.info if you have any questions about crypto because the crypto prices are all about to shift and change as well it's something we watch on this channel for the temperaments of the world we are seeing an increase in pricing for the top four and some movement in the bottom four or the top 10 so there is some movement here it's a little bit unique that I haven't seen yet so which makes sense because we don't also see an x5 solar flare very often so you can uniqueness is abundant right now it was hard for people some people in the temple areas actually were watching temples fall apart these stone temples which is and shrines which is difficult here's another zoom in on the situation in Japan that we're concerned about some fires Hawaii was also advised I guess not to do fireworks but there was a lot of people who did so I think there was a bit of a controversial energy there I think people are having a hard time letting go of fireworks and I can't quite figure it out so perhaps this year that will also be re revealed to all of us <laughs> And while we watch the Aurora Borealis and the ripple effect of all these earthquakes come through and come through all of the seismic lines, the fault lines of the earth. So keep alert, keep your eyes open, and onward we go to the next day and some more space weather. Let's see what other powerful flares we're going to be getting. Here we go. Okay, 
Here we go. Okay. Last two hours, it's been calm. Last six hours, it's been calm. The last 24 hours, there's been one, two, three, four, five major solar flares. In the last three day days, there's been about, I would say, then three significant ones over the last three days that we're dealing with. And so the January 2nd, 3rd, we're going to be receiving more solar wind. We're going to be receiving more Aurora Borealis, hopefully, and get a bit of a, a show from our sun and what it delivered for us for 2024. I am looking forward to what 2024 is going to offer. If you haven't seen it yet on my channel, I've done a December review of the energies and I'm already ready for my January review video. So please check out my Patreon, check out my YouTube videos for these updates and I will see you on the next video. Thanks guys. Beep, bubble, beep.